The other day, I was talking to a friend who was convinced that property was the perfect investment. He loved it. He would not hear a bad word said about it. And my initial reaction was, no, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect investment. There's just no way. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, property gets pretty close. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out some of the reasons we discussed, some of the reasons that he believes and I believe that property could just be the perfect investment. And then by the end of the video, we'll have decided whether it actually is. So the first reason is that property holds its value in the face of inflation. That's really important now when inflation is high, but it's always important because you don't want inflation to be eroding the value of your wealth. And property has got a track record going back a good couple of hundred years showing that it consistently does this. You can watch another video that I'll link to below that gets into this point in a lot more detail. The second reason is that you can borrow against property cheaply at a high loan to value. In other words, if you want to buy a property, you can borrow the majority of the purchase price and you can do so at a very competitive interest rate. So if you're buying your own home, the amount you can borrow will be higher. But as an investment, you can easily borrow 75% of the purchase price at an attractive rate of interest. You can sometimes even go higher. But that's pretty amazing. I'm not aware of any other assets where you can buy such a high proportion at such a low rate. The third reason is that volatility is low. And by that, I mean the price of property doesn't fluctuate wildly from day to day. That's not to say that prices don't rise and fall. Of course they do. Property prices can fall dramatically, but property moves happen over longer periods of time. You're not gonna have a day when property prices go down by 5%, which happens in the stock market. Why is that important? Well, it's good for your blood pressure, but it's also good for that borrowing that we talked about. Because if the value of your collateral that you put up against the loan suddenly falls dramatically, the lender might get nervous, they might ask you to put up more collateral, or they might call in the loan. With property, that can happen. But if you're sensible, the risks are so much lower than if you'd borrowed against other asset classes. The fourth reason is that the income stream goes up in line with inflation. So if you bought a property and it paid you rent of £500 a month and it was just £500 and that was all it was ever going to be, then over time that £500 would become less valuable. You'd be able to buy less with that £500. So in real terms, your return from that property would be falling. However, with property, rents tend to go up in line with inflation over long periods of time. Not immediately, but eventually the pattern is there. So that property that pays you £500 a month might then pay you 525 then 550 always keeping pace with inflation. That's not the case for all assets and that is another tick in the box for property. Fifth reason, we can just keep going. The income stream gives property a fundamental value. So the anchor of for property prices is rents, the income stream. The reason that you ultimately will hold a property is because of the rental income it can produce. You may hold it because you believe it's going to go up in value over a certain period of time, but ultimately the core reason for holding property is the rent and that's what gives it its value. Someone will always be willing to pay you something for the property as long as it's producing an income. You don't get this with all assets. So if you own shares in a company, that company can go out of business and end up being worth nothing. Its shares can become worthless. With cryptocurrencies, we've seen this happen. We've seen big cryptocurrencies with billions of pounds worth of value over the course of a week or two go down to being absolutely worthless. With property, this can't happen. Values can fall, of course they do. People can be more negative about the market than they were therefore they'd pay you less than they would before but the value of a particular property can only fall down to a certain level because of that rental income stream. I'm not saying that you shouldn't invest in any of these other things. They can be perfectly good investments and they will have advantages that property doesn't have but we're just talking here about what makes property potentially the perfect investment. Another reason, I've lost count now, you can buy at a discount. You can't do this with shares. With shares, they are worth what they are worth. There is a quoted price and you pay that quoted price. If you call your broker and say, don't you fancy paying that quoted price? Can I pay a bit less, please? Yeah, they're not gonna stay on the phone for very long. With property, it is possible to buy it for less than it's worth because of circumstances. That doesn't mean it's easy, doesn't mean it's guaranteed. There's lots of occasions when you think you might be buying it for less than it's worth, but you're not really. We don't need to get into the detail of it, but the point is, theoretically, it is possible. You can have a situation where you've got two identical houses next door to each other. 
In one of them, the seller is in a massive rush to sell, the other one isn't, therefore they will sell at different prices, even though the properties are identical. That is an advantage that property has over many other assets. Another one, you can add value to it. You don't have to, but you can do. So if you can find a way of extending it to add value, or you even just put in a lot of hard work and make it nicer and increase its value by more than the money you spent. You can't do that with shares or bonds or gold or crypto. They are doing what they're doing and there's not much influence that you can have over it. Whereas with property, you can. And the final reason, it's fun. I mean, there are people who find all these other asset classes fun as well, and I do as well, but there is something uniquely special about property that captures the imagination more than these others. So if property is something that you're into, it can be an investment, but it can be something that you really enjoy as well. And that is another reason that might just make it the perfect investment. So that's a lot of ticks in a lot of boxes. Does that mean that we have found that property is the perfect investment? Well, no, unfortunately not. There are drawbacks. Of course there are. You should have guessed. There is no such thing as a perfect investment. There are drawbacks to property, just like there are drawbacks to anything else. But for me, they are fewer and they're manageable. So let's run through some. The first is that you need a large amount of money to invest in property. Properties are expensive. It's hard to get started with small amounts of money. That is a problem. However, property funds do exist that allow you to get involved in property in a more hands-off kind of way with smaller amounts of money. The second negative is that it's illiquid, which means it's hard to sell. If you want to sell a property, for a start, you've got to sell the whole thing. You can't just sell a fraction of it. And also, it can take a very long time. It can be impossible to sell it at all, depending on what the market is like. That is a negative, but I think there's an embedded positive in there. If you try to panic sell a property, you'd have to be panicking consistently for at least three months. Whereas if you're investing in shares, you could go, oh no, the market's falling, click a button and you sold. So actually it can be quite a nice protection mechanism against your worst instincts. The third drawback is hassle. Yes, properties are more hassle than other types of investment like the stock market. But there are things you can do about it and you can come close to eliminating the hassle. And that's something we can talk about in other videos. And the final drawback, if I didn't mention this, about 100 people in the comments would, the tax treatment of property is less attractive than most other investments, to be honest. Now. There are things you can do about it. You can structure your way around it to an extent by setting yourself up in the right way. But even if you do that, you don't get the same benefits from directly holding property to say having shares in a pension or an ISA. That's true, that's a genuine drawback, but that's okay, that's normal. If there was an investment that genuinely someone told you had no drawbacks, then I'd be very concerned about that. Because like I said, there is no thing as the perfect investment but there is such a thing as the perfect investment for you. It's possible that property is completely the wrong investment for you. For example, liquidity might be super important to you. It might be, for whatever reason, essential to you that you can want to sell and have your money within a week. In that case, property is not gonna be the right investment for you. But there are so many positives. If those positives for you far outweigh the negatives, and if you can take some actions to reduce and control those negatives, if that's the case, then for you, like it is for me and like it is for the friend I was talking to, property might just be the perfect investment. But even if property isn't perfect, if you'd like to hear more about it, you should definitely be listening to the Property Podcast. We've got a new episode out every week. You can subscribe using the link below.